Welcome back YouTubers to another budget bike and car review episode. Um, something a bit different. Um, if you've seen my other videos you'll know that I did actually do one of these kind of conversion things um, about a year ago. Maybe a little bit longer than that actually. It was a Ford Transit that I picked up, an old plumber's van that I turned into a kind of a, a bespoke day bus surf van type kind of thing. And I decided to do it again because I went having a go at one of these Vauxhall Vivaros. Now this is a 2006 1.9 diesel uh, Vivaro, obviously, with 128 and a bit thousand miles that I picked up, again, relatively locally from a young lad who uh, was using it as a builder's van, effectively. Um, but he wanted something smaller, which I found a little bit odd, but, you know, whatever. It, so he came in to me, not necessarily super cheap but cheap enough that i kind of thought well i can do something with that price and maybe make a couple of quid if i can spend a couple of quid kind of thing you know so effectively this was just a builder's van um in relatively good nick if we um, if this sounds awful by the way this new phone i'm using i do apologize i'll check it when i get back and if the sound quality is crap then i'll get a new microphone for the next video but uh, it's a brand new phone so i've not actually had a chance to check out the video and audio quality on this yet Anyway, as I said, it's in relatively good nick. There's a couple of tiny little dents. You can probably see them. There's like one up here and a little tiny one down here. Um, I should have dealt with that. I did plan on dealing with that when I was doing the conversion, when I started the, the conversion, as it were. And uh, I just kind of almost forgot. So effectively, what did we do? There was no window. Um, that's a given, obviously, because it was a builder's van. Um, but there's a guy in where the village I live who was working for another company fitting windows and doing carpets for camper van conversions. And I got hold of him on Facebook and he came and fitted that window for me for 50 quid, which I thought was very reasonable because he's got all the right tools. He knew what he was doing. I didn't have to do the scary bit of cutting a great big hole in the side of my van because it is a bit daunting to be fair um so we did that the window itself was only 100 quid so 150 quid and i think you know you've got to have a window because it's just way too dark in there effectively we didn't change the wheels because i didn't do it on the last two either i just got some wheel trims i got some black ones and i got some silver ones but i think the silver ones look a little bit better i mean we'll start about uh, talking about the exterior first then i'll let you in and we'll have a look around um the bumpers have had a couple of little knocks here and there you can probably see there's a little scuff down there i'll get some back to black on there um because they do need touching up just a little bit here and there you know there's nothing wrong with them necessarily um, but they could just do with a little bit of love. There was a little scuff on the front here as well, which I tried to touch in with a bit of back-to-back -back already, but it didn't work out massively well. But, you know, it's been absolutely pissing down here for the last two days, so the van doesn't look as nice as it did two days ago. Um, but it's a Sunday, and it's the only day I can get out to make this video for you. Uh, so what did we do on the outside? The window, the bumpers, we tidied that up. We did the wheel trims, and we got some of these... Well, I, I got some of these... Um, handle covers here but they're the cheap kind of generic ones you get from China and they're not very good if I'm honest they don't stick on very well they look nice but they're not you know I think if you're going to do this properly for something that you want to keep then spend that little bit extra and get the dedicated ones that I mean they might be like a hundred quid for all four but I think it'll be worth it because they'll they'll last they'll stick on better um the wing mirror covers as well they were nice and cheap 25 quid I think off eBay they're, they're all right you know they actually worked out okay there was a hell of a lot of stone chipping on the front bonnet, um, as you would expect, I guess, with a van because of the, the, the way it rides down the road. But I just touched those in with um, a colour matched pen and you wouldn't know now, really, would you, apart from the little bits of rain on there. That's, that's come out all right. I'm quite happy with that. Um, so that's pretty much it on the outside. Didn't do a lot. Let's start off with the cab and then I'll let you into the fun part. I did obviously clean everything up in here and I fitted the same seat covers as I fitted to my Transit, the first white one, purely because they none of them actually fit. I mean, if you watch that video, you'll know that I've already said that none of them fit dedicated. They'll tell you they're for a Vivaro or they'll tell you they're for a, uh, a Ford Transit. They're not. They're just for a, a triple seat like this, a, t a twin and a single. But they seem to fit relatively well. They look okay and they're only 30 quid a set. You know, they're not going to win any beauty contests, but they look a lot better than the seats that are underneath, shall we say. Because obviously, as I said, it's the builder's van. Um, I did have to change this as well, this gear surround, because it was so scratched and scuffed and horrible and battered from being a builder's van. Um, a little bit like that uh, glove box drawer there. Um, so I bought one of those 25 quid off a scrapyard, whacked that in. The other kid put this uh, Pioneer Head unit touchscreen in there, so, uh, you know, why not just leave it in there? It's not the prettiest thing I've ever seen, but it serves a function, you know. And I must get a blanking grommet 
for here as well because they're only about five off eBay. And there's a little USB thing in here which has been very badly put in. But you know, hey ho. And I've also got a new carpet as well. You've um, a cloth black carpet because underneath here it's just all rubber mats. But I just feel this takes it away from being a, va a van into more of a car kind of feel, and that's what I was going for with that. Um, I have got to, while I remember, grease up the bottom of these. Um, seat belts because they, they stick a bit it's probably just all bits of oil and crap that have been accumulated over the years from builders hands as it were now we might as well start at the back really I suppose all fully carpeted I used Veltrim this time the first time I did one the, the transit I just used normal carpet with the foam back and taking off and, and it worked but it was a bloody hard job and it wasn't cheap and it was just a bit of a pain in the bum to be honest but obviously I stripped out all of this kind of area here this was broken so I replaced that with a part of eBay and I carpeted all the panel all the way around and then I did what I did with the uh, the white transit I silver amorate uh, right it rather all the way around the rest of the trim there where I couldn't get in with the carpet or didn't want to Again, in hindsight, what I would do next time is I would actually follow that round to this contour and cut it off here and then just do this part here in silver. So next time I think I'll bring it right the way in. But, uh, you know, you learn these things as you go along. I'm not a professional van converter type bloke. I'm just a, a guy with a plan, as it were. And obviously the same on this side over here. Just literally take the panels out of here and then what we did along with the walls as well it's sorry if this is getting a bit confusing but these are all panels behind here on both sides they were all stripped out and then there was a layer of double bubble uh, insulation sheeting that was stuck to the uh, walls as it were um, and the ceiling of the van and then the earth wall was used which is basically like rock wall but it's a kind of eco-friendly um, insulation it's it's not as bad as loft insulation in the way that um, it kind of makes your hands all itchy and horrible like that but it's the same sort of stuff made from old uh, broken down plastic bottles I think uh, so that was all shoved along in there stuck in and then the panels were basically carpeted when they were out of the van and then stuck back in again uh, I then decided uh, to not do what I did with the transit and just kind of put a foot on in and do it a bit half-heartedly almost. I decided to actually get a proper kitchen unit and a proper rock and roll bed. So if we close this up a little bit. Ah, the one thing I did do here as well, which I thought was kind of handy, is I had this so you can have storage underneath. As you can see, you can get a couple of plastic boxes in there um, and that's your extra storage. Inside these cupboards, I've still got some conduit in there and some bits to tidy up. There's a little fuse box for future proofing for more electric products if you want to stick them in that's effectively the inside of the kitchen unit the wardrobe part now in here you could put a shelf perhaps but then that would block I'm not quite sure what to do about this whether to um, just put a pole in and use it as a wardrobe or stick a shelf in and use it as two cupboards I haven't really decided and because it's going to go for sale I think I'm going to leave that to the other guys to decide what they want to do um, the whole thing came in this green this kind of speckled MDF green. I then did two coats of undercoat and three or four coats of uh, water-based gloss over the main part of the units and left the doors um, because I like the colour combo. Um, I think this whole kind of speckled, I don't know if it comes up on the camera, but this whole speckled green thing with the white, I think it looks really nice. And to be quite honest, if you wanted to change this to any colour you like, it's a case of taking out four screws, take this handle off, and there's the magnetic thing obviously to shut it take this off and then you can paint it any color you like blue red purple green whatever color you like basically you can make this your own anyway uh, the rock and roll bed now if we close this up a little bit and there was a guy on ebay selling rock and roll beds just literally powder coated nothing fancy and then you do what you've got to do to them so i ordered one of those it arrived i still had some plywood left over um, from doing the sides and i used that to basically form the bottom of there as you can see now the cushions i ordered the foam four pieces of custom cut foam off ebay again i think it was about 75 quid and then i went off and bought some lovely material i really like this blue let's see if we can get some light in here it's one of the lights i fitted look if you can see that and then there's two more up there i'll whip those on so you can have a look actually just to give you an idea of uh, you know the bare minimum electrics i did because these are just push on push on i must remember to turn those off obviously and as you can see now there's a fair bit of light in there as well including this one i'm going to stick another one just 
here as well there's a co2 um for gas sensor type thingy up there as well because obviously we'll talk about that in a minute anyway back to the foam the foam was about 75 quid i picked up this beautiful blue kind of it's almost like a canvas material here and then i covered the single bits of foam each time and what i did is i put a bit of plywood underneath but slightly smaller than the cushion. So if you can imagine, it kind of goes like so, and then all the way down. And then I stapled the back of the cloth onto that board, and then Velcroed the board onto the other board. So effectively, there's 12 mil, as you can see here. It looks like there's only one piece here. Oh, where's my finger? Here. But there's another piece just underneath here. So that all sits in there. So that kind of reinforces everything. This isn't openable bubble uh, because you couldn't because it slides forward which is which but I may as well just show you that now actually oh, oh that's the velcro we don't want to do that bit we lift up that bit there and the whole thing effectively folds forward into a bed it's a bit rough and ready at the moment because I've just literally flopped it down so bear with me while I put this back up And that's how quickly you turn a bed into a sofa. Simple as that. The only thing I would say about this material is I've left it, just like I did um, with the kitchen, to the fact that you could actually change it yourself. Uh, that's why I stapled it, because I thought, well, again, if you prefer red or yellow or green or gray or black or whatever, you can change that yourself by just literally pulling out the staples, which I thought was a much better idea, generally speaking, um, than sticking something down which is gonna be permanent, like, um, a leatherette or anything like that you know uh, but the problem is it does crease a little bit um, but it's you are set one for the other in the respect that you know yes you can change it it's easy to um, you know move things around if in a year's time you decide you want to change the colors up like I said that's very simple if you do it to a point where it's got zip covers on then you're kind of stuck with those and they are king expensive to do to cover four bits of foam like this is around about 250 300 quid um, and I didn't want to do that I bought the foam and the covers for a like hundred quid and did it myself and like I said let me just turn these lights off like I said you can then oh, change them in the future which I think is a much better option because people get bored everyone's individual oh beautiful rainbow look at that um, everyone's individual you know I love this blue I love the green and white but somebody might not they might say well screw that that looks bloody horrible then they can take these doors off repaint them the color they like they can take this canvas cover off put some new stuff on there but it's like I think I paid 30 quid for the material and that did all four bits of foam so you know that's what it would cost you a pot of paint and 30 quid and you could have this all a completely different color which I think is a great idea um, now then the cooker i decided to go all balls out as it were and not you know just like leave it for somebody else to do i got a smev nine treble two and stuck that in there as you can see you've got a lovely sink and then you've got twin hobs over here obviously all working with gas there'll be a gas bottle that goes in there there's the pipe and the little valve for that already there's the tap as well which will go just over there um so just making sure that was actually still turning um yeah i haven't put that in yet because effectively what i'm going to do is i'm going to let the other people decide what kind of size water they want because there's various ways you can do it you can have the waste water go straight out the bottom of the van you can have a big water bottle with fresh water and then you can have what i think they call it gray water which is the uh, the crap water from the sink next to it so you'd have these two next to each other but you can have them all the way up like huge bottles you can have flat bottles and then obviously you can have a three kilo gas bowl, five kilo, seven kilo, whatever. If you're going to go away for a week or a weekend, you know, you decide what, however you holiday, as it were, in one of these vans, you decide on what you want, the capacities, and everything's in there. Those blue straps you can see, they're going to go one either side, basically over here. That will hold in the gas bottle and the water bottles. That'll keep everything nice and locked. They're ratchet straps, basically. So I just thought I'd stick those in there. And then obviously everything's nice and tight in there. And then all that just closes up. I've even left the little uh, plastic bit on the cooker so they can see how brand new that is. And when you're not using this, it turns into a nice little workable space here, you know. Um, this is obviously the other part of the cabinet here or the wardrobe, whatever they decide to use it with. There's a little bit of storage up there, I suppose, as well. And there's, as I said, the, the uh, sensor for any kind of issues with uh, gas escaping. I stuck this in, which you probably saw from the back of the van. That's the, your power supply. In here is a cigarette lighter hookup. And, and this side is a USB 
which I thought was very useful, but I didn't think there was enough. So what I've done is I've stuck another USB, oh, excuse me, just in there. But underneath there, I'm either going to replace that with a cigarette lighter or stick the cigarette lighter right underneath it and hook it up with the same power source because I figured somebody might want to put a 12 volt TV in it because you could put a bracket here and just have a very small 21 inch screen here perhaps and then the 12 volt TVs they just literally plug into a 12 volt socket like a cigarette lighter so I stick one there then obviously you can just plug it straight in that's all you need maybe run the aerial at the side job's good and I've left a wire up there as well thinking that they may want to put another lighting up there it's all ready to go um, but I've left it up there looking a little bit hard at the moment just to explain it's there but at night time obviously you can just pull all this closed like so those are blackout curtains so effectively when you're in the van um, it's pretty fucking dark if I'm honest I mean I'll close that door off a little bit and hopefully that'll give you an idea but um, I do want to get another curtain for this window here because they're only about 45 quid, I think. Excuse my wobbling about with this camera. I just want to switch that off. They're only about 45 quid, and I think it'll just set off the last part of the van. So I'm trying to tidy up and make this video for you. I stumble around. This is going to be a very wobbly video by the looks of things. Um, the curtains, they do need tidying up a little bit because they're not fitted perfectly i don't like that hook up there i'm going to change that around for a smaller closed loop hook possibly um the roof now i'm going to tell you about the roof because i've never carpeted a roof and ply lined it and it was a real pain in the ass but not as bad as i thought it would be um i didn't do it on the transit i literally carpeted over the metal um, of the roof of the van which was a bloody terrible idea in hindsight um, but this time I thought I'd do it properly. The plan was to have down lights, LED down lights, all the way across here. I couldn't get my head around it. So I decided to go with the same lights as I used on my first van. These switchable LEDs up here. There's 72 LEDs in each one of those, so that's bloody bright. And then obviously you've got this one here, as I said, which you can see comes on and off with a switch and it can be moved around. And another one's gonna go just there. And as I said, I've left this wire up here. If anybody wants any more light, they can put that in there as well. And the floor was bought again um, from a local shop. It's just lino, very thick lino but nice grey wood look. I didn't want that too much of woody stuff going on. Sometimes people go a little bit apeshit with the wood um, in these kind of projects and I didn't want to go quite that far. So I thought I'd do something a little bit different and get this kind of grey wood planking look affair. Um, and I think it's worked out quite well to be fair. And I put this rubber strip around the step as well which I think finishes everything off quite nicely. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean it's quite a quick video considering it's taken me just over two weeks to convert this um i did this panel as well i don't know if you can see that very well or if it explains itself i did that to hide the bottom of the seats because all you can see is the kind of metal framework of the back of the seats and i thought it looked really ugly but that in turn then has made a slight problem for the curtains as you can see but i'm gonna let somebody else decide what to do with that you know because you've got to give people a little bit of an opportunity to make these things their own you know um because at the end of the day camping and camper vanning as it were it's a very individualistic kind of thing you know people like to do it in different ways you know there's a lot of people out there that hate rock and roll beds like this one here you know um i don't personally see the point in having a seat at the back but i guess if you were sat by the beach and you really wanted to sit there and have a cup of tea looking out the back of your van yeah great why not not my idea but you know whatever and there it all is, nicely lit up, you know, as in all natural daylight in there. It's a bit windy today, so everything's flopping about. But um, the kitchen itself, I might as well tell you about that. That is a generic kitchen, effectively. I mean, a kitchen wardrobe. Let's give you that view as well. Looks nice, doesn't it? Um, that's a generic one. It's just, well, I should say, a universal one. Um, and although it did fit, it did need a bit of chopping. I had to chop out... I don't know if you can see that. I had to chop out a little corner there for the cowling that comes down for the seat belt. And I had to top, chop off a tiny little corner just over here to get it to fit. But it does fit. Um, and I could have had a slightly bigger bed in hindsight. You know, I could have maybe created an extra, what was that, three inches there in the bed department. Um, but I think it's fine, personally. The guy that made this bed, see, he'll say, he said rather that he will make it to your specifications. And it wasn't that expensive. I mean, a rock and roll bed covered um i think that they go for around about 500 quid this bed frame as it were 
was 169 quid plus the foam plus the material so probably 300 quid so I saved a couple of hundred quid doing it myself and I think it's a better option because you can change it about but that's just my theory some people would want it all kind of like uh, leatherette look and zipped cushions and you know washable all that kind of stuff and that's fine they can still do that you know they could just literally rip these covers off if they wanted to and then put proper covers on if they wanted to they can change these doors they can paint them white and make the whole thing look like their house if they want to you know but as I said what I want to do is give them enough scope that they can do these things themselves somebody might just say that's perfect I love that color scheme you know with this kind of mauve curtains the green speckled cabinet doors the blue the gray the slightly darker gray you know a lot of people might just turn around and say that's absolutely what I'm looking for you know um, but as I said other people they might turn around and say well I fucking hate that and that looks terrible and then they could change it. That's the beauty of it, you know. And there's a view from the passenger side with those seat covers again. I mean, as I said, well, these are generic because it's got an opening there for the uh, kind of armrest, which these don't have. So <laughs> obviously it wasn't made for this. But the uh, floor mat fits quite nicely, as you can see. So that's it. That's my 2006 um, walk around, as it were, of my camper van conversion, which was effectively a young guy with just a builder's van. I took it off him and in, I think it was 16, 17 days of work, with not a lot of experience, truth be told, I turned it into this kind of camper van, surf bus, day van conversion thingy. Um, I mean, there's still scope to improve it and do stuff. You can stick some nice funky wheels on there. People do that a lot. Um, I just went with wheel trims because, you know, somebody else can have that expenditure. But I think it came out pretty bloody well. That's just my personal opinion. You may obviously have your own opinion. But if you've done one of these conversions, um, or you're thinking about doing one and you've got any questions, you've got any advice, you think things you think I did wrong, perhaps, or, you know, things you think I did right, and you've got a, a question about that, drop it in the comments, you know, because I'm happy to, I mean, I check my YouTube account every single day, I always answer pretty much the same day as the question comes in, um, so just drop it in the comments. If you've got uh, any plans, as I said, to do one of these, and you want to find a little bit of advice, or if you want me to give you some links to the places I got some of the stuff that I used, um, you know, I'm fine, I'm happy to do that. I've even got some pictures of the van um, when it first came into me. So, you know, I can quite happily email those to you so you can see how the project went if you're interested at all. But to be fair, most of these projects are kind of generic in the respect that, um, you know, it's a ply line to back of a van and then you see it carpeted with a kitchen. In. So, you know, there's plenty of YouTube videos like that out there already. Anyway, that's it for this one. This will go up for sale. It was never going to be um, a forever one. I just wanted to do another one. I wanted to do a proper one compared to the white one I did, which was just literally carpet the walls, an old MDF cabinet. I mean, check that video out and you'll see what I mean. It's in my videos. Um, and I just put a foot on bed in that one. And that sold within a week. So you'd think this one, with the amount of time and money and effort that's gone into making this to be what I think is a nice looking van, um, I would expect this to sell quite quick. Although it is the wrong time of year, to be fair. It's a lovely sunny day down in Cornwall today, but uh, you know we're in November now when I'm making this video, so it's possibly the wrong time of year to be selling one of these. Um, anyway, that's it. Uh, look out for some more content coming up, um, which I imagine will be... By the time you see this, this will probably be coming out in 2019, because as I said, we're in November, and I've got a few videos still to, uh, to post up yet. So um, I hope you had a great Christmas and a great New Year, and look out for some more content coming soon. All right, thanks for watching, guys.